So what is tumefactive MS? If you've never heard of it before, you are not alone. I hadn't heard of it before either, and I have MS. In fact, most people with MS have never heard of it. However, it does happen, and a lot of people know very, very, very little about it. So I thought I'd talk about it today a little bit. Uh, I already had a friend who had been diagnosed with it years ago, and it was actually his first diagnosis of MS. And I didn't know a whole lot about what it was, but I knew that it was very serious, and I really, really felt bad for him. But now that I have my own diagnosis just like his, I've had to look a lot more into it. And it's amazing how little information there actually is out there. There's not much. They don't know a whole lot. You'll probably hear me say that a few times. They just don't know very much about it. So what I thought I'd do is I'd just look it up a little bit and point out some of the things on uh, the website that I found that is helpful. So I'm just going to read a little bit. I know this probably isn't the most professional thing, but I thought it might help for those of you who are researching because it is considered a pretty rare form of MS. So here we go. So tumefactive multiple sclerosis is a rare form of MS with symptoms similar to those of a brain tumor. More on that later. On MRI scans, the condition appears as tumor-like lesions larger than two centimeters. Tumefactive MS symptoms may include headaches, cognitive abnormalities, mental confusion, difficulty understanding and forming speech known as aphasia, difficulty with the movement patterns needed to produce speech known as apraxia, seizures, and weakness. Now I want to add in, if you have some of these symptoms, please don't assume that it's MS and please don't assume that it's tumefactive MS because although they're saying they're specific to tumefactive, people with MS have pretty much all of these potentially, other than maybe seizures, but even then, hard to say. So it's interesting because it just makes it really, really unclear as to what is tumefactive and what is not. So what you really need is the MRI to show really big lesions and then you know that's probably gonna get diagnosed as tumefactive. So let me carry on here. Tumefactive multiple sclerosis is rare and its cause is unknown. Tumefactive MS can have symptoms similar to those of brain tumors and diagnostic tests are used to help rule out other causes and confirm a diagnosis. These tests may include MRI scans of the brain and spinal cord. Since MRI results can be similar to what is seen with brain tumors, a biopsy may be performed to aid in diagnosing the condition. So I just want to add in my comments too. So for, I think especially for people who have not been diagnosed with MS and now they have these symptoms, they're kind of looking at all of the things to figure out what's going on. It's actually fairly common to have to have brain surgery to decide whether it's a tumor or it's demyelination inflammation that would suggest MS lesions. So mine is a bit of a different situation as I mentioned because I already had my MS diagnosis of relapsing remitting MS more than a decade ago. So when these new MRIs came up with bigger lesions, they already knew what was going on so they didn't do any brain surgery, thankfully, because that would be horrible. My friend who I had learned about this from, he did have to have brain surgery, which is just horrific and causes its own long list of problems as well. So I'm thankful I didn't have to do that. Also, they can see my lesions are coming and going, so that wouldn't happen with a brain tumor. They, so they know that's kind of ruled out. So I am thankful for that, even though this is still not fun at all. So next says, tumefactive MS is often misdiagnosed as a brain tumor, most commonly astrocytoma brain tumors. So there you go, but there are ways they can rule that out. There is no cure for tumefactive MS and the majority of cases develop into relapsing remitting variant of the disease, which I already have. So again, this is why mine is a little bit of a different situation. With my friend, he started off with a diagnosis and then seems to have moved into possibly relapsing remitting. So it's, it, I don't know, it's a bit of a mess, but I wanna talk about that more. So I just wanna add in a little bit of my notes on this. Um, they know little about this condition. As I was saying, they just really don't know much. It's, they can see it on the MRI, that's about it. And they can see that you're having symptoms. 
So they don't know how to treat it necessarily. They don't know whether it will settle, it will just become relapsing remitting MS or whether it will continue to be tumefactive. And I know my doctor has been extremely unclear, but she also is not an MS specialist and has probably never had to deal with this situation before. So, and as I said, my, my situation is a bit different because I already had the diagnosis. That, that makes it a little bit different, you know, for them to figure out. We don't know if I am going to have ongoing tumefactive lesions or if they're done or if there will be ongoing simple relapsing remitting like I've had or if it's going we just really have no idea what's going to happen so my doctor's freaked out or she's at least trying to freak me out about it and the nurse is probably even worse <laughs> and I think it has a lot to do with the fact that they just have no idea what they're dealing with but it's very interesting so uh, and it's a great opportunity to push, push, push for those meds. So that's kind of where we are. Now, another thing that's different about my situation is that while I'm being diagnosed with tumefactive MS, the only symptom I have is the seizures, which are not even happening all the time. They're happening months apart generally. So that is different. I have talked now with a number of people who have tumefactive MS diagnosis. A lot of them have had to have the brain surgery and they tend to have very severe symptoms. So not just the seizures, although that's fairly common with this particular diagnosis, but they're having, they're, they're in a wheelchair. They're in all kinds of really, really difficult situations, but they're having the worst of the MS symptoms as well. So they're having lots of really nasty relapses too. So I'm not, I'm not having anything else. My MS is still extremely stable other than the seizures, which is kind of weird from what I'm learning. So again, I'm in my own little situation here that is different than what a lot of other people are dealing with. But I hope that although my medical professionals have told me not to go online and talk in the groups, whatever, I have found it super helpful to talk to other people who are dealing with these situations and try to figure out what's going on, what to expect, what their experiences are and, and knowing that mine is different and especially with MS, they call it a snowflake disease. So it's different for everybody. And that's true for tumefactive MS as well, of course. So where we go from here, I don't know, but I am thankful for the opportunity to talk with other people who have the same diagnosis and who are battling some of the same things, especially seizures, because it's a very weird thing to figure out. I am talking with other people who have seizures as well, but they, don't necessarily have the same kind of situation as I do because there's sometimes they don't know what it is. Most of them don't have MS, you know, so they're dealing with maybe they actually have a brain tumor or a scar or they've had brain damage from something or, you know, there's there's a lot of different things or maybe they st it started in childhood and so there's no idea. They don't know why seizures start when people become epileptic. It, sometimes they disappear when they get older. That's all another thing that they just don't know much about. And so so basically you're stuck with trying to take lots of medications to see if anything will just help you keep more stable, but it's all Band-Aid. It's not a, a cure. There's no cure for any of this. There's nobody looking for a cure as far as I can tell. It's just you just live with it and take lots of medications and try to find your own way through. And if you're like me, you're trying to find natural ways to help yourself to not damage your health further with all these medications. So. I will add that with the tumefactive MS, with the seizures specifically, I am having cognitive issues and memory issues. I am having confusion and a little bit of aphasia, all that kind of stuff, which is totally expected from any kind of seizure, whether it's MS or anything else. It's just what seizures do to your brain. So the four seizures that I've had in the past nearly year and a half, each one took quite a while to settle down from, whether it was a full tonic seizure or the complex partials that I've had the last two times. So they definitely mess with my brain and make it difficult to pick up and carry on. And you can see some of my videos are actually fairly soon after I've had a seizure. So you might notice that um, I'm having a little bit more trouble figuring things out and probably lots of cutting up the video because I'm constantly having problems with speech and getting things out and remembering what I wanted to say. But uh, I, I can already feel now it's been almost a month and a half since my last one and my brain is starting to act more normal again, so I'm very thankful for that. Also, with relapsing remitting MS, even though I am stable, other than the seizures, I don't have any new relapses and haven't had any in a very long time, um, 
I do have ongoing symptoms that are permanent, such as the fatigue, the hyperacusis, uh, a little bit of issues with my fingers, numbness, tingling, pain, and yeah, cog fog. There's a few, there are things that are ongoing that are probably because of permanent scar tissue that is never going to go away, especially in my C-spine. So those are all there, but they're not really considered part of the relapse situation because they're permanent. So they're not part of progressive either. They're not progressing. So I'm still in relapsing remitting phase, but I'm dealing with those things every day, which is why I would be considered disabled because like the fatigue never goes away. The insomnia doesn't go away. There's, there's things that I'm just going to have to battle from now on. And I'm hoping and praying that I will find ways to deal with that in natural ways, you know, ways to help my health, such as using oxygen therapy and of course supplements and healthy food and healthy diet, still doing best bet diet and hoping to see some improvement over time. I don't know how many months or years even it might take before I start seeing those improvements, trying to do workouts as best I can. Of course, that's really, really hard with fatigue and with seizures that definitely messes things up. And I've got other health issues as well that are not related to the MS. So that makes things again, more complicated. So that's all my rambling about my situation. I hope that helps you to understand more about what tumefactive MS is. As far as we can tell, there's so much that we don't know. But like I said, please don't assume that's what you have if you have some of these symptoms because they can be any number of things, many of which would be fairly benign, not a big deal, like especially headaches and things like that. That happens to people. So even if they're really bad, really, really bad migraines, that kind of thing, that's not necessarily anything to do with MS. That could be just migraines. They have their own realm of issues that you have to deal with. And again, they don't know much about it because as far as I can tell, the medical system doesn't have that much information on the brain or the central nervous system at this point. They have some things, they have the MRIs, and I'm thankful for MRIs. It's a wonderful invention, but it only tells you a very small number of things about what's going on in your brain. The rest is guesswork. So I have noticed different reports versus what the neurologist says when I talk to her can vary and you can get different opinions from different people. So. And she's even mentioned as much that different people will say, this is different, this is different. Like my first lesion that she started calling too effective, the person who wrote the report about my MRI did not call it that. And I did want to mention that too, that my first tumor that she called too effective was what the report called possibly a balo lesion, which is generally sort of a bullseye thing with rings, you know? So it's very different than what you would see in a normal MRI scan of an MS patient. Mine was one ring with like a, a hole in the middle. So it was a bit different and it wasn't huge. So it wasn't really technically probably big enough to call tumefactive, but balo lesions are usually associated with tumefactive, which I've had to learn along the way. So I'm guessing that's why she started using that word so often. And then my next scan, um, goodness, many months later, maybe close to a year later, did have a much larger lesion, just a big blob of a lesion in a different part of my brain. The original Balo lesion had settled down and was there's very little evidence of it anymore. So that one was pretty much gone. So then there was the new lesion and also another seizure. So it was very weird. Everything is just very uncertain. So thankfully I am actually going to get to go and talk to an MS specialist now. And it's gonna be a very difficult trip that will probably knock me flat on my back for a week and potentially bring on a relapse. I'm hoping and praying that's not the case, but I am looking forward to seeing someone who actually specializes in this and hopefully has dealt with tumefactive lesions and can, can really look at what my situation is and decide whether that's what I have and hopefully maybe do another MRI and do a new assessment. So at very least for a second opinion, that would be helpful and uh, hopefully we'll figure out what to do next. I have not started a DMT because I have been testing for whether or not my health can handle one. And so far the tests are not showing that I could. So there's still more tests to go and see what's going on, see if they can get some other things going better so that my immune system is in as good a shape as possible so that they can then do some damage to it. So we'll see. And I don't know if I, I really don't want to take it, but I may not have any choice because there just isn't any other help available to me, including especially the natural stuff. There just isn't anything available here. My naturopath has no clue about any of this stuff. It's just not within his realm of training. So, and there, there aren't any functional medicine doctors here either. So, so I am very limited, but I'm trying to work my way through. And because I'm diagnosed with tumefactive MS and because I'm having seizures, trying to find general help with this 
is pretty much impossible because nobody knows and it's scary, right? So if anybody says, hey, why don't you try this detox or whatever, then it's like, okay, that'd be great. But is it going to give me a seizure? Could it make things worse? Maybe. I don't know. Nobody knows. So I'm kind of stuck right now. So if you are in a situation where you've been diagnosed with tumefactive MS, welcome to the game. May the odds ever be in your favor. It is a wild one to try and navigate the medical system and make sure you can get a second opinion if you can, because there's a lot unknown and there's a lot of opinion within the medical realm with whatever shape it's in now. So thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful to you. If you have tumefactive MS, like I said, I would love to hear from you, however it's presenting, however your diagnosis is. And God bless.